Hello there. Well, it's very humid outside. It wouldn't surprise me if there was some thunder in the air. I'm at a stage now where it's not just everything outside that annoys me. Even I annoy me. <laughs> if they don't kind of uh, lift a little bit of this lockdown soon, I think a lot of us aren't just going to go stir crazy, we're going to go crazy. <laughs> Full stop. Um, I, w I went for my, my, my walk there. You know, I'm standing at the side of a, a side road off on Barton Road. Um, there's a, a, a Range Rover. Um, stopped at a junction. No indicators. In the, in the absence of an, an indicator, you assume they're going to go straight ahead over the Barton Road and up the, the street that I was standing at the side of. So I waited patiently. And, uh, of course, the absolute idiot that was driving was actually turning left. But, you know, when you, when you own a Range Rover, you don't think indicators are important. Certainly not for the minions in Partick. <laughs> so, so I am raging. <laughs> um, and, of course, usual story... An hour's walk, and I'm almost sprinting home to get to a toilet for a pee. You know, I, I very much hope when they partially lift this lockdown and we're allowed to go out for, you know, as long as we want, that they'll start opening the public toilets and parks where there are public toilets and perhaps in other places, because that's just ridiculous, you know. I can't be the only person of a certain age who goes out for a walk and is struggling, you know. As I say, I, 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 that's how I'm going to get fit during this lockdown, sprinting home for a pee. <laughs> Swings and roundabouts. <laughs> One of the things I've noticed about the lockdown is in connection with parks... I mean, parks before the lockdown were places that had a lot of different types of activity. You know, folk just having a wee stroll, walking their dog. There was, like, army fitness courses. And uh, there was also uh, fitness classes for uh, mothers with babies and prams. Um... Which I always kind of, um, I always thought, thought it was a little bit strange. I dare say it's a good idea. No reason why a, a mother with a baby in a pram shouldn't be fit. But it, it was the very idea that you could have a, a group of um, mothers jogging in the park with their prams. I, I, I just, there was something about that that I just kind of couldn't quite get my head round. And I could always imagine that if you caught a glimpse of the baby, they would have a big wide-eyed expression in their face and a kind of look that suggested that, oh my God, what's happened? I'm being wheaked about the place at speed. <laughs> um, I mean, prams are themselves are a, a topic I could probably discuss at length. You know, there's prams with... Um, Coffee cup holders, you could have your little cup of coffee and stick it in the, the holder on your pram. I think, you know, I mean, if I was ever to have a baby in a pram, I think what I would want is a little holder for that would take a pint glass and maybe a kind of tray that you could put maybe a pizza or a kebab or a fish supper or something. That's the sort of pram accessory I would like to see. These days, the sort of activity you see in parks j during this lockdown is uh, a little bit different to what it used to be. We're not seeing the same sort of activities. And it's generally just folk either walking or jogging. You know, and... Of the folk that are walking, i.e. getting their bit of daily exercise in, some of them are kind of have a, a determined sort of look about them you know they're walking purpose, purposefully sort of at speed with big wide arm swings 
and a sort of slightly aggressive demeanour. You know, they're, they're out for their exercise, come what may. <laughs> you don't want to get in their way. Um, and then there's the joggers. I mean, you know, some of these people that are out jogging just want to just call it a day, you know. Forget the jogging, just do a walk. Because they look as if they've sort of dragged their weary body or only just managed to drag their weary body out of the house. And now they're doing a kind of jogging thing in the park. <sighs> I mean, come on, guys, it doesn't look good. It really doesn't. I mean, for anybody doing the fast walking or the jogging, you know, I, 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 in many ways I'm full of admiration because you're, you're out there doing something, you're keeping yourself fit. Uh, better than yourself during these troubled times and in many ways all this is is an old guy's moaning session but um, I mean if you're jogging at least make it look as if you're just try to make it look as if you're enjoying yourself don't make it look as if you're suffering some sort of horrendous torture that would be my advice Um, I was up the town a few days ago in Glasgow city centre uh, I probably shouldn't have been I went a little bit further than I should have done and further than I normally do um, and you know it, it, it didn't feel safe the, the city centre had a threatening feel to it you know there was hardly anyone there you maybe saw the odd policeman. I've often thought that during this lockdown, it must be a great novelty for the policeman getting a bit of walking exercise. He's usually stuck in a van getting taken about the place. But uh, yeah, th 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 apart from the policeman and myself, there was just, there was a lot of drug addicts and drunks lurching about the place in groups of two and three and at one stage I, I saw a kind of group of about six or more all kind of gathered together it just did not feel safe and you get that sort of feeling and I think they call it fear where you suddenly realise that you're in a really bad area and you've got to appear calm but get out of there as quickly as possible that's the feeling I was getting in Glasgow city centre, you know. And in, in many ways, it's not hard to imagine the thin veneer of what we term society breaking and unleashing whatever it's covering or whatever lurks beneath it. And, uh, you know, society could just so easily break down which is one reason why we have a lot of premises uh, pubs mainly that are boarded up the windows, the windows are, are boarded up with bits of wood in fairness there's not that many and it is mainly pubs um, and they're boarded up to prevent break-ins looting or whatever the word is and uh, certainly I, I know of two pubs that have had Attempted break-ins, you could almost say half-hearted attempted break-ins, but attempted nonetheless. Um, uh, before owners uh, thought to remove all their stock and take it to a place of safety. At the moment, what we're all experiencing right now is a quite extraordinary period or episode in the history of the world. One that will go down in the history books and be talked about and discussed forevermore. And we're living it right now. And 
in that respect, that's why I wanted to do this video. To perhaps uh, show some of the boarded up premises and sort of record it for posterity. Because we'll never see this sort of thing again in our lifetime. And indeed for many generations, I would think. So during this video, uh, I, I want to try and show you um, the streets of Partick, uh, some of the few boarded up premises, and at various locations I will uh, say a few words uh, of, of just things I remember about these locations, uh, memories, um, because I was born and grew up here. Um, I have shot this footage early on a Sunday morning, or I will shoot it early on a Sunday morning, um, which is normally a quiet period. Uh, it's obviously even quieter just now. So, uh, Partick and Lockdown. Well, we're starting on Dumbarton Road, uh, just along from what is now Broomhill Roundabout, and we're looking east towards the Tower of Glasgow University. And that crane which seems to get in the way these days. In this 1955 photograph you can see quite a bit of the Meiji area. Dumbarton Road is running from left to right uh, along near the bottom of the, the shot. And uh, it, you've got two covered stairways of Bartic West Railway Station and also the railway line, the two bridges crossing over Dumbarton Road. And the bridges and the railway station, these have gone and um, Partick's police stations now in there. The railway line entered the tunnel just up here and it emerged at um, Crathy Drive and uh, the big white building just um, on the other side of Crathy Drive is uh, Crathy Court, built in the 1950s for unmarried women, a building that still stands today, quite an iconic looking structure. And if we look up Thornwood Avenue you can see a it's a billiard hall there. I remember an engineering works just right there. And a little sweetie shop just in the corner. Which was a good place for a sweetie shop, given that Thornwood Primary School was just across the road. And I'll tell you, you get some good sweeties in there. And just a little further along Dumbarton Road, just uh, where the health centre is just now, used to be number 555 Dumbarton Road where a number of people were killed in the great hurricane of January 1968. And I remember as a wee boy standing, looking across at that building and seeing coffins being removed and placed in hearses. It was just one awesome hurricane. And a bit further along the Barton Road, looking at the junction of Crow Road and the Banton Road and Rosevale Street. And that's the Rosevale pub just in the right hand corner there. We actually lived in the 1960s in a tenement on the Barton Road at this location. In this shop, looking up Crow Road, there used to be a cinema on the left hand side, I think it was the Tivoli. And on the right hand side you had the railway goods yards where we did quite a lot of our playing as uh, children. And uh, one of the entrances to Partick's railway station is just up there. That's the Rosevale Tavern again. And um, in Rosevale Street there used to be a, a church and uh, it, 
I think when I, I was at the Life Boys or the Boys Brigade, we used to go in there occasionally. I'm sure I performed some sort of play or something. But just across from the church, in one of the tenements, which are long gone, there was a, a small sweetie shop with a, a wee old woman and two or three of us used to go in there and um, buy a penny glass of lemonade and stand and drink it like we were men standing in a pub. And back on the Barton Road, the pound land on the left is where Woolworths used to be. And then further along on the left hand side You've got the remains of what was the Western Bar, part of Greg's now, and Greg's have thankfully seen fit to retain a bit of uh, the advertising that they uncovered. A lovely bit of uh, old uh, advertising there. And there's the Fiddler's Bar in Fortro Street, just around the corner from the Partick Cricket Ground. One of a number of pubs boarded up. And back on the Barton Road, there's a Victoria Bar. Some of these pubs that are in the tenements, although the the frontage seems quite small, they actually go back quite a bit and you, once you're inside you'll find it's actually quite a large premises. And with the shutters down and a lot of these retail concerns it just looks a little bit lost and forlorn and um, not good. A quarter jill just at the foot of Highland Street. And looking across at more boarded up premises in Highland Street. It's strange, you know, a lot of these pubs or just a place where a lot of folk would go to socialise and to think that they're all lying empty is very sad. Just looking across the Barton Road and looking up Byers Road with the three judges just on the right hand side. Good place to sit on stools and look out the window at the comings and goings of the people of Partick when it's open. And this time looking west along Dumbarton Road, just towards Party Cross. And again on the right hand side you've got a number of premises boarded up. The sooner we get a grip of this pandemic, the better. <laughs> 